Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here and today I am going to talk about my team that I'm using in our adventure in the Kitakami region. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's first DLC wave has dropped the Teal Mask and there are so many brand new and returning favorites that you can use on a new team. I wanted to go into this and kind of leave my Paldea region team in Paldea and start a brand new team. And they give you a ton of great options from starter Pokemon to Pokemon littered across Kitakami to use. So today I'm gonna talk about my team and how it came to be. Let's get right into things. Now the first Pokemon on my list is of course the starter. The professor gives you a Pokemon at the start of your adventure. Mr. Jacques, who basically serves as the Pokemon professor of the Kitakami region, gives you an egg. And in that egg, you can hatch one of the three Sinnoh starters. Really cool little thing they add in Kitakami. There's a ton of different references to the Sinnoh region and Hisui, as well as some Unova references that we're going to be expanded upon in the second part of this DLC. But when I got my egg and rode around on Maridon for a while, it eventually hatched and I got a Chimchar. Immediately, I nicknamed this Chimchar Cobalt as a reference to the Hisui region where these Pokemon are from, and it is now a powerful Infernape with a moveset of Flamethrower, Close Combat, Acrobatics, and Calm Mind as of now. Now, I'm not done with the Teal Mask just yet. I've not captured every single Pokemon. I have not beaten the story. I've captured a bunch, which allowed me to add another teammate, which I'll get into in the future, but for the time being, Infernape Cobalt is my starter Pokemon for the region, and I'm very excited because it's probably the Sinnoh starter I use the least when I play through Platinum or Harkle or Diamond and Pearl and BDSP. So I'm very excited to be able to use it on my team in Kitakami. On every team that I do, I always like to have a Fire, Water, Grass, core set of Pokemon that can cover those basic types and then I build the rest of the team out from there. Now of course this is not a full game so I took some liberties with mismatching a couple types and using a couple times over but for the sake of continuing with that core I wanted to catch a core fish and evolve it into Crawdon, a water dark type Pokemon to complete the water part of that core. It has the moves Crunch, Razor Shell, Icy Wind, and Swords Dance. I'm probably going to replace Razor Shell at some point, but right now it is nice to have the stab that Razor Shell provides. Icy Wind has been really helpful in some of the boss battles, and Sword Stance increases its attacking strength, which is also really good. It's got the ability Hyper Cutter, and it can terastalize into a Water type. I have wanted to use a Crawdont forever. Hoenn is one of my favorite regions, it's top two with Sinnoh, and I have always wanted to use a Corefish on my Hoenn teams, but I never really got around to it, mostly because I always end up using Mudkip as my starter, so I don't like to have multiple water types on the team. So I'm using Crawdont in Kitakami, and it is awesome to have. I also caught it in a dive ball, which I thought was a really nice touch, so I'm really happy. Duford is also, of course, its nickname and a reference to the Hoenn region where it is originally from. So that's my second teammate, that is Crawdont the Duford, or Duford the Crawdon. <laughs> now in the Northern Hemisphere, we're approaching fall finally, and to give a kind of fall vibe to my team, I was really hoping that one of Gorgeist or Trevenant was going to end up being in the DLC. And luckily for me, Trevenant is. So I went and caught it. It was a uh, terror raid battle, so I caught it fully evolved already. The grass ghost type from the Kalos region has a terror type of normal, which is fun and contributes to one thing I added in its moveset. I of course named it Wilds in a Dusk Ball, so it's all very fitting. It, its moveset is Energy Ball, Shadow Claw, Trailblaze for now, although I'm going to probably swap that out at some point. I like the speed boosting ability of Trailblaze, so that's why I have it. And also Earthquake. It has Natural Cure as its ability, and as I said before, it's in a Dusk Ball. I love Trevenant. I love the Halloween aesthetic that it gives. There are so many great Kalos Pokemon from X and Y, and to be able to use another one that I've never used before is great. The DLC has been a godsend for letting me use Pokemon that I don't regularly use, including a brand new Pokemon, which I'll touch on in a second. And I'm really happy that I get to use Trevenant. I would have preferred Gorgeist, and honestly, if I could have caught a Phantump, I might have just kept it as Phantump because Phantump is one of my favorite designs of any Pokemon ever. It is wonderfully adorable. It is Trevenant. It is wild. It is a great addition to the squad. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. 
And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that's also always greatly appreciated. You were already able to see from the thumbnail, but Ninetales, who is nicknamed Enchanter, is also on the team. A pure fire type, this one has a fairy terror type, and I caught it in a repeat ball just because I felt like the yellow on the repeat ball kind of went with the bottom of Ninetales' tails, the yellowish kind of tint that it has, different from the rest of its body, it is of course the original form of Ninetales, it is not Alolan Ninetales, which is an ice type. I've got it holding a Lucky Egg right now to get more experience because I caught the Vulpix lower level level than the rest of my team. One of the cool parts of Kitakami is that there are a lot of trade and stone evolutions that you can catch, and this is no different. Use a fire stone to evolve it. Right now, I'm rocking Flamethrower, Terra Blast, Dig, and Safeguard. I'll probably swap out Terra Blast at some point, but Flamethrower is just a must on any fire type. Has the ability Flash Fire, obviously, so it's just something that is really good to have. I love Ninetales. I love Ninetales from the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. That's the biggest reason I wanted to use it. For a while, I was trying to come up with a Mystery Dungeon-esque nickname for Ninetales. I pulled up some maps of different locations in the Mystery Dungeon world, couldn't really find one that I liked, so I ended up just naming it Enchanter, given its lore about pulling the tail and having bad things happen. So Enchanter is its nickname, and it is an awesome member of the team, and completes my Fire, Water, Grass core. Although, I did already have the Fire, Water, Grass core completed. I caught this first and then got the egg for the starter Pokemon, so I am doubling down on the fire types, but that's okay. I like fire types, and there is a lot of grass and bug types in Kitakami. I had to add more Sinnoh love onto this team, so I'm rocking a Mamoswine, the ice ground type with the ice terra type. Nickname is Snowpoint because I love my Sinnoh and Hisui references. It is holding soft sand right now, but that's mostly just because I want its Earthquake to be extra powerful against some of these boss battles. I'm rocking Amnesia, Ancient Power, Earthquake, and Ice Fang. Some things are definitely going to change. I'd like to get Blizzard on here, or maybe Icy Wind or Ice Beam, something like that besides just Ice Fang. It's got Oblivious as its ability, but this is a regular story playthrough. I'm listing off the abilities for you guys every single time, but I don't exactly care. I do like the fire boosting with Infernape. That is nice. It doesn't have Blaze, but it is what it is. Uh, this is in a Premier Ball because it matches with the Ice typing, and it's just an all-around solid Pokemon. Really good defenses, really good attack stat on this Mamoswine, good HP. So that's why I'm using it. I wanted to add an Ice type because, again, we're getting into the fall, into the winter months. The whole Paldea region is a little bit more of a temperate region. It's a little colder. You've got the big mountains. I wanted to use that as inspiration. I wanted to add another Sinnoh Pokemon. So that is why Mamoswine is on the squad. That is why Snowpoint is on the team. And I, I've used a Mamoswine before, but I didn't use it in a Sinnoh run through. I used a Mamoswine in a Kalos run through. You could mount a, a Mamoswine at one point in X and Y, and I wanted to kind of take that as inspiration, kind of think like that Mamoswine you're using was actually on the team. So I've, I've used one in the past, but we're using one again in this playthrough. If you have not caught 150 Pokemon yet in Kitakami, if you do not know some of the leaks of some of the new things in the game, in the DLC, specifically a new form of a newish Pokemon. Spoilers lie ahead, it's not on the thumbnail. The final Pokemon on my team is Ursa Luna, specifically the new form of Ursa Luna that drifted ashore to Kitakami from Hisui decades, years ago, and now looks pretty much zombified. This is Blood Moon Ursa Luna with a special move, Blood Moon. Ursa Luna's moveset for me is Blood Moon, Earth Power, Moon Blast, and Calm Mind as of now. I put it in a heavy ball because I felt like the kind of like bumps on the heavy ball kind of matched with Ursa Luna's energy. It has an ability called Mind's Eye. This Pokemon is a ground and normal typing, just like the original Ursa Luna from Pokemon Legends Arceus. It has a normal Terra type that I'm probably going to change. You can change Terra types in Scarlet and Violet, so I'm probably going to end up changing that at some point, but Ursa Luna, the original Pokemon from Legends Arceus, rocks. Another reason why Legends Arceus is one of my favorite Pokemon games. They introduced so many incredible Hisuian forms and new evolutions to older Pokemon. Giving Ursa Ring an evolution was just awesome. Never expected a Pokemon like Ursa Ring to get an evolution. So to get one like Ursa Luna and to now be fed even more by getting a brand new form for Ursa Luna is truly, truly 
awesome. It is a wonderful thing that they include in this DLC. The mini storyline is also really good, taking the photos, using your camera, going to the woods, encountering this Pokemon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also, the fact that this Pokemon is standing up on two legs and when you send it out of its Pokeball, it is enormous in the game is wonderful. When you encounter Ursaluna in the woods, it plays the battle theme from Pokemon Legends Arceus and the encounter theme from Legends Arceus as well, which is a wonderful touch. They hit it out of the park with this entire little side event in the game. You can only access Ursaluna in the game if you catch 150 Pokemon in the decks. So that's why I referenced before if you haven't done that yet. It's great. It is the sixth member of my team. It is ground normal. It rounds off everything wonderfully. And I love that we got a brand new form to an already awesome Pokemon in Ursaluna. So that is my team for the Teal Mask. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And let me hear what your team is. Who are the six that you're rolling out for your Kitakami adventure? Are you sticking with Paldean Pokemon, your original team, or did you decide to use some new guys? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.